You write in the introduction to your book, our health systems suffer from arrested development. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it means that we started off really well. Uh, way back in the 40s and 50s and 60s of the last generation, we did some really great things. We, Tommy Douglas and others decided that we should have insur insurance for everybody so their hospital care would be covered. And then later they decided we should make sure everybody has insurance for doctor care. And that started in Saskatchewan, was affirmed across the country. Monique Bejan did some great work to wrap all that together in 1984. With the Canada Health Act. With the Canada Health Act. And then we stopped. Even though those founders of Medicare always dreamed that it would go beyond just doctors that was guaranteed and beyond hospitals, that it would include things like home care and mental health care. But we essentially rested on our laurels and said what we had done was pretty awesome, and it is, so it's, it's not nothing, but it never actually finished developing. Well, you said one thing in this book, and I thought, don't we already have this? You said universal primary care is something we should have in Canada. And as I say, I thought, wait a sec, we have that, don't we? We don't, eh? We do not have that, and you are not alone in thinking that we have that because we've always thought, well, everyone can get doctor care, but the reality is everyone can't because, in fact, we know now from studies that have been done in the last year or so measuring access to family doctors that there's about 22% of Canadian adults that don't have a family doctor or any other place to go to get primary care. And it happened almost without us knowing it like the frog in the pot that gets yeah. boiled up until you realize that you're in a bit of a crisis and no one was paying attention. It's like a bunch of folks my age, a bunch of family docs my age just retired and suddenly two million people in Ontario don't have a family doctor. It's it, mm -hmm. Retirement is a big part mm -hmm. of it. It's the supply side as well. Mm -hmm. It's people leaving and going into specialized areas, but it's certainly reached a crisis point. You know, I gotta tell you, one of the reasons I really liked your book so much was not just the prescriptive part of it, but also because I've known you since you first got into public, actually I met you before you got into public I life. Think so. uh, but I, there's a lot in here I didn't know about you and with your, per well, you've written about it so I'm not gonna ask your permission, <laughs> I'm just going here. How much of your wanting to be a family doctor was because of what happened to your brother Gary and maybe you should explain that to people as well. Well, thank you for asking that, Steve. And I do, in the, it's in the chapter where I talk about being a family doctor that I describe the family doctor of my childhood, uh, that I re the first one I remember, and how he did house calls for us, which was an amazing thing that very few family doctors do anymore. And the reason that really mattered a lot to me and to our family was that we had um, a very tragic death of my brother, who was just a year or so older than me. He was six and a half years old. We were living in Winnipeg at the time. There was a big influenza outbreak in Winnipeg and he became sick uh, one day and a few days later ended up in Winnipeg Hospital and died uh, within days of his illness coming on. And it was obviously incredibly hard on my mom especially. And I always felt when our family doctor came over to visit or when we went to see our family doctor that it really mattered a lot to my mom that she knew that there was someone that was looking out for her and looking out for the kids. And so I think that while I didn't realize it at the time and almost didn't realize it until I reflected on it in writing the book that two decades after my brother died, I was a family doctor myself. And I'm sure that what happened to him had more of an impact than I've ever realized. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.